Hello everyone, welcome back to Ramsfell. This is Pix Plays Minecraft. My name is Pixorifs, of course, and we're going on a fishing trip today. <laughs> I've decided that's probably going to be the subject for this video, and there are a couple of reasons for that. The first being that I need puffer fish, because I'm going to be working on my house design at some point, and I've been working on a couple of cool wall designs off camera in creative mode, and one of the things I want to do is put in some prismarine. And of course, for prismarine, you need to raid an ocean monument. I have an ocean monument on here, but I am nowhere near prepared to take it on yet because I don't have any potions of water breathing. Thus, puffer fish, hence fishing trips. So we're going to take a trip down the river again. I think I'm probably going to go and fish around here in the jungle because it's quite a nice little area. It's a nice kind of varied scenery for you guys to look at. And the second purpose is so we can have some quality time together, which I think is probably the key to any good fishing trip is just being able to spend a bit of time with people that you want to hang out with. So that's what we're going to do today. I've got a couple of rods with me and a bed so we can camp out if we need to. If it gets a little dark, we can always sleep away the night because I don't really fancy fighting a bunch of mobs today. I want this to be kind of more calm than that. And of course, we're coming back down this river with all the chickens in it through the jungle. But it's nice to visit this area of the map. I kind of like it. So yeah, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about how things have been going on the channel because I've had a reasonable amount of success. I mean, success for a, a small-time YouTuber like me is getting a few new subscribers in the door, and that's what's happened. I've had an influx of new subscribers because of tutorial videos that I've been making and a few people finding out about me and just wanting to come and see what I do, which is really, really cool. And I've had a recent uptick in subscribers that's led to me getting over a hundred it led to me getting over 128 which i kind of decided to celebrate as two stacks two times 64 of subscribers which i thought was really nice um this could be a cool spot i quite like it around here let's cast our line in here and see what we get i've got a couple of enchants on these rods so hopefully we shouldn't have to wait too long for a fish but one of them's got lure and one of them's got luck of the sea so we'll see what we do i think this one maybe has luck of the sea as well but yeah, I, I managed to get in a six and a half, like six and three quarter hour live stream the other day, which was fantastic fun. I have been told <laughs> by people who live stream and yeah, like even on the stream, um, oh, completely missed that one. <laughs> I, I haven't quite got used to fishing yet. The uh, I was I was told by uh, a couple of people on the stream, uh, specifically Bambiable, who is kind of like the stream guy out of the Cherry Patch group, although Cherry herself obviously streams quite a lot now. Um, I was told by him that I still stream like I'm making a YouTube video, and I haven't quite got like the form for live streaming yet. I mean, I'm sure he was trying to be more encouraging than critical because he's an encouraging kind of guy a lot of the time. He's very kind of motivated and stuff. And I don't know, it's interesting. I, I don't quite have the mindset for streaming yet it's still something that i do quite occasionally and i have a lot of fun when i do it but it's an interesting dynamic it's different it's more like you're just kind of hanging out playing stuff as opposed to me having to be super informative yes we got our first puffer fish okay so that's at least three water breathing potions for this trip out to the ocean monument which will be very useful i'm going to kind of over prepare for this as much as i can because i don't want to get completely ruined by these guardians and lose all my stuff which can happen pretty easily if you're not fully prepared but yeah the live stream went really well we did an hour and a half of decidedly neapolitan which is going to go up on this channel in three half hour long videos i managed to get the splits worked out quite well in that video which is good because me and kane have a tendency to just jabber and talk and stuff and obviously there's going to be a bit of us talking to people in the chat here and there which is going to be a little bit confusing for it being uploaded on YouTube, but I think people are maybe used to that kind of thing now, and if I kind of make it obvious that it was a live stream at the time in the annotations or the video description or whatever, hopefully people won't mind that occasionally we talk to people kind of off the screen that you, you can't see. I always wish that you could record the chat from Beam or Twitch or whatever it is, and I think there is there was a way of implementing that in-game where you could have the Twitch chat appear as chat on the screen in Minecraft, like it as appear as in-game chat. But I think they're now taking out Twitch integration, which makes sense, really, because nobody was planning to use it. But I read on Reddit this morning that they are planning on removing that feature as part of 1.9, which, if anything, just means that I won't accidentally press the F5 key and get the Twitch broadcasting unavailable screen, which... 
to me, you know, is an advantage more than anything else. I'm pretty sure everybody just used OBS anyway. And OBS is kind of an interesting piece of software and it's surprisingly easy to use, even for somebody like me who is not, I'm quite technically minded, I guess, but every time I get to grips with a new piece of software, there's always a bit of a teething period where I try and find out how to make things work. Even when I started recording these videos, oh, I've got a clownfish. I've got every type of fish you can get now and virtually no junk, which is pretty good, but I guess that's the lure working for me. And I don't have <laughs> luck of the C3 on this rod. But yeah, I, I managed to get to grips with OBS pretty quickly, uh, except for the occasional problem with it having this giant stripe of pixels that was moved from the right hand side of the screen over to the left hand side of the screen. You'll see what I mean in the videos if you didn't come join us for the stream. Hopefully I'll be able to stream a little bit more often, but my job search still needs to kind of take priority so I don't need to I, I, I need to spend less time in Minecraft generally I still want to make as many videos as I'm currently making because I really like it as a creative output but it's kind of luring me into this false sense of productivity whereby I think I'm doing a lot of stuff and I'm actually not like I've built all of these cool things and it feels like I've been really productive and I've had this social group with the guys on the the on the vanilla server and so it feels like I kind of have this work environment but really I don't because I'm not getting paid for any of it at least not right now and it doesn't look like I'll be anywhere near getting paid for YouTube work as it were in in the near future so definitely need to prioritize the job search and so I need to spend less time just hanging out in Minecraft. I still want to be making videos so I still want to spend as much time as is necessary to make these videos and I don't want to be one of those people who just logs in, records for 20 minutes, logs out and doesn't do any work off camera, but I need to find a happy medium. There has to be a balance here. So it's going to be interesting to see how I approach that in the next few weeks. I'm not getting many puffer fish right now. I'm only getting salmon and raw fish, which is okay because I like to gather a few resources every now and again, but I want me some puffer fish because we want to go and fight some guardians. So yeah, I'm going to fish here for a little bit longer. I'm going to do that off camera because I think I'm pretty much done talking for the moment. But we will be back when I've got a few puffer fish, can brew up some potions, and then maybe we'll see about taking on that ocean monument. So see you guys in a second. Okay, I've got myself a second puffer fish. I've got a ton of other fish. Look, I've got that many other fish. Got a clam fish, got 24 other fish, just two puffers, and no junk whatsoever. So... I guess for some that would be a successful fishing trip. For me, it's almost a little disappointing, really. I kind of wanted to fish up some interesting stuff or at least a couple more puffer fish, but I guess that's the proportion in which the game gives out these things. And at least that means that I'll be able to get myself six water-breathing potions, so that's definitely not to be sniffed at. The sun is pretty high right now, so I'm going to go and brew these up right now while I can. I've been sleeping a lot in this world to try and avoid mobs and stuff appearing. Obviously, it's a little difficult to do that when you're playing multiplayer, so... I kind of want to take advantage of the fact that I can do it here. So we're back in the brewing modules today. This is the brewing setup I devised quite a while ago, and I think it works pretty well. I'm quite happy with it. I'm going to grab some nether wart out of here, put one in there, and we'll brew up the other one as we go. So let's grab some more bottles, fill them up from there. We can close that trap door and pop that in there so it's brewing fantastic so we need eight minute potions so we need redstone as well grab a couple of pieces of that and we're all set puff fish in there cool wait for this one to finish brewing Awesome. So, water breathing potions on the go. The next thing I need to work on is armor because I have these enchanted boots, but the rest of my armor is not enchanted. And I have some more diamond gear that's up in the enchanter's cabin, which I think I've been working on to get it aqua affinity and uh, whatever the other one is. Respiration. That's it. We need respiration so we can do a little bit more breathing. Obviously, these are going to give us eight minutes of water breathing time each, but just in case, respiration is always handy for when you run out of air and I can use the torch trick, I can use the bucket trick. There are a couple of things at my disposal that will help me out when it comes to raiding this guardian place. But basically I just want a bit of prismarine so I can work on this wall design. And maybe a couple of sea lanterns as well. But sea lanterns are not something that I'm going to prioritise. At least not right now. Obviously it would be nice to clear out the monument a little bit. And if I can get some sponge from there that would also be pretty cool. Because sponge will allow me to do a bunch of stuff. And will be a lot 
of help clearing out the monument in future. So here we are, got six potions of water breathing for eight minutes, which is going to do us just fine. I'm going to put them in here in the Ramsfell Brewery for now, where I've already been brewing up some potions of night vision to help me out with this. And we will come back here when we're ready to take on the monument. But for now, let's head over to the Enchanter's Cabin and see what we've got armor-wise. Should be a little bit of stuff in here. I can't remember exactly what I have because, again, switching between these survival vanilla worlds is a little bit confusing when it comes to stuff like that. So we've got Protection 3 on here. We've got Aqua Affinity 1. What else would be useful to have on that? Unbreaking, for a start. <laughs> I could definitely use an Unbreaking book. Do I have one of those? I've got Unbreaking and I've got Depth Strider, but I already have Depth Strider on my boots. And then we have this crazy book that I have no idea what I'm going to do with. Not sure which of those I want to choose. I think probably the best would be Sharpness and Unbreaking, but maybe Fortune 2 and Unbreaking is worth it. I've got Fortune 2 on this pickaxe right now, which kind of needs repairing. And this has Protection 3 on it, and I have a Thorns 2 and Protection 3 book, and I wanted Unbreaking on that as well. So I'm going to need to enchant myself some more Unbreaking books. I kind of don't know how easy that's going to be because I don't tend to get unbreaking all that often. There's unbreaking two there. Do I have an unbreaking two anywhere else? I don't think I do. I have a couple of protection three books which would be useful to combine. I might go for that unbreaking two book, you know, because I think I have enough levels for it and then yes, that's all I need is 17. Cool. So Maybe we can combine two Unbreaking 2 books instead of wait for an Unbreaking 3 enchant. But then Unbreaking 2 is going to be pretty difficult to come by as well. Just check around here, see if I've got any incomplete ones that can be combined. I don't think I do. Even Unbreaking 2 is kind of worthwhile, to be honest. That's not too bad, really. But I'm probably going to need to get working on that. So here we go, another off-camera job for me. I'm going to try and combine myself an unbreaking book. Let's sleep in here as well while we can. Done a little bit of sleeping. Yeah, we got a little bit ambushed by monsters back in the jungle, but it's all good. We're doing all right. Okay, let's see what we can do about getting an unbreaking book together. I'll be back, folks. Okay, as you can see, we've been through a few levels. We've been through a few shovels, some very efficient wooden shovels in here now, and one very fortunate shovel. Uh, I am back at level 15 because I got myself a Silk Touch tier 2 enchant, 15 levels. That is not bad. That I'm, I'm pretty certain that's the first time I've ever seen Silk Touch come out that easily, and I've got a couple of other Silk Touch books already, but it's always useful to have that just as a backup, and especially if I've got some cobwebs on the go with shears. Now let's see how we're doing for a unbreaking enchant because I still don't have another one. I haven't seen unbreaking come up at all on the enchantment table since. Nope, still nothing. Okay, <laughs> looks like we're back to the grind here. I'm gonna have to make a few more things to enchant, but I might have a go at a pair of diamond leggings because I don't think I have one of those hanging around yet. So let's go back to the storage facility and see if we can craft some more. I definitely want to get full diamond gear for this because, as I said, I want to be kind of over-prepared. And the only way I can be more over-prepared than this, I think, would be having a beacon. Um, I've got a decent amount of diamonds on this world, actually. I haven't harvested that diamond ore, haven't fortuned that yet, because I like having the ore blocks around. And if I'm not using the diamonds right now, then it's not like they could be of use to anybody else <laughs> because we're in single player right now. So it's kind of nice to keep them that way either until I need them or until I can use them as some kind of decoration, because I like using all blocks as decoration occasionally. I quite like it, and one of the ideas I've had is making this kind of like um, monument almost to Minecraft, which has kind of like the tiers of where you find stuff, like uh, in the overworld and kind of like almost as a museum piece, having everything kind of in the strata that it appears, so you get kind of stone and so forth mixed in you get ores as they appear sort of coal ore and iron ore at the top and then diamond and em emerald sort of scattered around and then redstone and diamond at the bottom uh let's see what we can get on this protection four straight away okay well i'm back to the grind with the zombies down here the problem with this is that it's a little bit slow like obviously this is the kind of standard water drop design for a zombie spawner and they're going to be really loud so i'm going to turn down the hostile creatures for the moment so i can carry on talking to you guys this design is 
kind of flawed to me now in that it takes the zombies from here, obviously drops off the baby zombies down there, but it takes them all the way up and over here to drop them down there. I have to AFK in this little corner here, and I'm so used to the other spawner designs that we now have on decidedly vanilla on the fifth choice server which are way more efficient than this they take less time for the zombies to appear i mean one of them is a double zombie spawner but the skeleton spawner even takes much less time for them to appear because they don't have to go around this whole water system and then the kill mechanism is so much easier and doesn't rely on them taking full damage and sometimes in this spawner setup they've taken suffocation damage on the way up and if they take even half a heart of damage with the amount they have to fall so that you can kill them in one punch occasionally they're just dying that's what i figured out they're doing they're taking like occasional suffocation damage as they travel around here and then some of them just drop down there and expire immediately without giving me experience which is what i want from this because i have a ton of zombie flesh now so I think I might remodel this I don't want to do it right now and it's kind of a task that I would do off camera even though I've said earlier in this video that I don't want to do as much stuff off camera because it's taking up valuable personal time I do need to remodel this spawner see there's one that just died when it <laughs> died on impact and that's not what we want from this kind of spawner and there really aren't a great deal of zombies here already like I've been waiting here for a couple of minutes and that guy's got thorns on his armor that's annoying <laughs> um yeah i've been waiting here a little while already and there aren't that many coming down so i think i need to remodel this so it's a little bit more efficient there are probably caves in the area that i haven't found and lit up so that might contribute to it in some way and maybe if it's dark and so forth then the surface isn't perfectly lit up either but this is going to be a a bit of a problem and it always takes me a while to grind for levels around here it might even be more efficient to find a better way of gathering experience like harvesting ores and stuff but right now i think what i want to do is remodel this i'm not going to do it immediately i'm just going to wait around for this probably afk go get myself a cup of tea but i will definitely be doing that in the near future because this needs to change the situation is not as i would like it and i'll probably keep the design of this and it already uses the materials that i kind of decorated the spawners with over in the decidedly vanilla server because yeah spruce and stone brick are the ones i used to kind of decorate spawners now and i've kind of got this brand going on that i want to keep going with the redstone is also remarkably complicated because i got it all set up with this switch on the wall over here but the spawner lighting is all over here so it's <laughs> it's kind of at odds with itself it's kind of making things way more complicated than it needs to be it's making them less efficient than it needs to be and right now what i want is efficiency because i want to spend less time here also the kill mechanism with full damage works pretty well i guess but the lava kill mechanism works so much better for me kill stuff with armor instantly in one punch without you having to kind of grind away hitting them which is always the problem with these full damage spawners when you're playing on hard because a lot of zombies end up spawning with armor so yeah some remodeling needed here i think anyway i'll get back to the grind i will make myself a cup of tea and hopefully i'll see you guys when i've been able to enchant these leggings and maybe an unbreaking book as well so we will be back okay so here's the deal Definitely remodeling that zombie spawner because that took way longer than it should. I have been here for a while. I managed to get a level 30 enchant, got protection through uh, protection 4 on the leggings, and I'm going to use this book on it. And here's the reason why. Aquafinity already got on this helmet. Fortune 2 already got on this pickaxe. I have Fortune 3 elsewhere as well. Power 4 really don't need that. I've got bows for days with power four and it's really easy to get that enchantment anyway sharpness three i don't need unbreaking three is pretty much the only thing i want this book for and i've had to replace the anvil up here because i put together the diamond chest plate with an unbreaking three books so that's now got thorns protection four that's looking pretty good we need unbreaking three on these leggings so i can have protection four unbreaking three and then i'm gonna put unbreaking two on the helmet <laughs> i really wish i didn't have to do that but I'm going to because that's probably as good as it's going to get for now I've had no luck getting an enchanted book that has unbreaking so this is our armor setup we've got protection three four and projectile protection four on there but that's fine because it's got feather falling and depth strider which is the things we need the boots for anyway so this is going to be my guardian killing setup just to look at all the shovels I've had to make <laughs> in order to do this um I think I have a better sword around here somewhere as well, because this sword has sharpness 4, but it's got fire aspect and knockback, which are not the best enchantments for dealing with guardians. 
especially if we want a couple of rare drops from them. I, I do want some Prismarine Crystals, even though I've got Sea Lanterns there, because I don't really feel like setting up a Guardian farm on this server. That seems like a lot of effort. Um, okay, there we go. Sharpness 4, Unbreaking 3, Looting 3 is going to be a lot better sword for taking on Guardians. And then I will repair this pickaxe or take another one of these with me, maybe the Efficiency 3, Unbreaking 3, because I don't need a great deal of efficiency, especially considering we'll be getting Mining Fatigue as soon as we turn up. But that will be another story for another time, because I think that's time, with the sun setting in the distance, to call it a day for this episode. This has been a little bit of prep work, so sorry if it wasn't the most exciting thing in the world, but I do have a couple of things. Oh, oh, I want to check. I, I just saw something really cool on Reddit. And by the way, today, I think, is the day that they're going to put out the first snapshot for 1.9. So I'm really excited for that. I'm probably not going to do some kind of snapshot update video because a lot of channels do those now. So I don't really feel like that's going to be a huge draw for people to this channel. And I'm not going to be the first person to come up with any kind of cool discoveries from it because I'm sure everybody on Reddit will have discovered them long before I have. But if there's any cool details arising from the 1.9 snapshot that I feel like would be interesting to people, I might put out a couple of like pre 1.9 release tutorials if there's like like details you can use with the stuff they've added into the game so I'll definitely be taking a look at that later today if it arrives on time but very excited to actually be part of a snapshot for once because it'll be the first time that I've ever really um, been part of the Minecraft PC community when a snapshot has been coming out now this is something I've just seen which I really want to try because Somebody posted this. I believe the user's name was Nightmare, some kind of variation spelling of the world of the word Nightmare. But Skulk Sniper was the user who discovered this in the first place, and this is a really really cool trick. I look forward to using this more in future. So you've got a banner on the top block there, and then if you put a painting behind it, it looks like if you can get a a too tall painting, and obviously paintings are the one of the most annoying things in the world to deal with but it can look like your banner is framed like that i really like that as a detail i think that's kind of nice and it's a shame that banners sort of do that waving in the wind kind of detail because if that just looked like it was mounted to the wall that would be an incredible detail but for now it's not bad right for now i think that's pretty cool and i think if we get the other painting i don't know which one this is actually Oh, and that's going to be a little difficult to take off the wall again. But there are two two tall paintings. There's the one of the kind of like the nerdy looking dude. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe him. And there's the one of the kind of tall man just sort of standing with a, a walking stick. So if you get one or the other of those, I think it has a slightly better frame for certain banners. I think that one would be great for the Ramsfell banner, but I can't place the banner on the top block now, so the banner has to be placed before you put this painting down, but that black border would work out really well, so I'm going to see if I can do that and probably frame these two banners next to the town map. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, guys. Um, <laughs> zombies burning over there. You can't reach me. Oh, he's got some ink. I might actually get the ink off of him. <laughs> thank you very much for that, sir. Ink delivery on time as requested. Thank you very much for watching this video. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Please leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel for more videos from Minecraft, including perhaps some more detailed tutorials coming very, very soon. There's going to be one coming up on Saturday, but there might even be some 1.9 details if we can get our hands on that. So I'll see you guys soon. Bye for now.